All right, so in order to have photo P work a little bit more effectively, we are using screen resolution, 72 pixels per inch, 10 inches by 14 inches. This is gonna look great on a screen. So if I say view and show, let's see, or view and say pixel to pixel, then it will show me my image at the size of the pixel resolution of my screen. I don't know why it's going so slow. There we go. So this is the size it will be. And that's a nice size image, even though I have a high def screen and 72 pixels per inch is kind of the standard for standard screens. Now I'm going to expand my canvas size so I have space to work. And I'm gonna change that to 40 inches by 30 inches. It will still just be 72 pixels per inch. And I have lots of space here. Now I'm gonna start bringing in my references, starting with my background. So as I drag this in, when we were at 350 pixels per inch at print resolution, that kind of crashed the machine. And you can see how big our resolution is. Now we shouldn't have any problem having images with large enough resolution. Now, basically I want that sky to go right there. And because it's my furthest back layer in my sketch, I don't need to cut out anything from this, but I don't want it to hide the rest of the sketch. So that's why I need this space. So I'm just gonna tuck this over in the corner. And now I'm gonna build the next thing that's on top of it. And that's gonna be the eclipse. So I go to my reference image, I drag and drop it in. It's gonna be large. This is why we had the exercises with the transform tools. I'm gonna shrink it down, but now I'm gonna get rid of what I don't need. Okay, so I'm gonna shrink it down, holding down shift. And then st instead of using the magic wand and trying to select all the black, I'm just gonna use my regular lasso tool and just roughly cut around it. If you think of it like a collage, this is a rough cutout. And then I hit Command J to duplicate it onto a new layer. And that allows me to select the layer underneath and just hit delete. So I don't have to keep that memory anymore. And now I can hit Control T and I can shrink that to be the size I'm thinking of for my finished image even though it kind of breaks my heart that all these references are large enough to do print resolution, but I have to composite it at only screen resolution. Well, yeah, so you're, when you're placing your references, you're making them way smaller too, right? I'm making them fit my plan, yeah. So because our references are made to, to be print resolution, which is good, and if you guys are using Photoshop, stay at 350, but you're gonna end up shrinking them a lot. Because mine is shrinking down to like 260, like close to that, like really, really small. Yeah, it depends. Like my whole image is only about a thousand pixels wide. Right. Okay, now I'm going to keep moving forward. This next background layer is this castle or rock here. It comes in really big. I'm going to go ahead and cut it out loosely with my magic wand. And I want a lot of overlap. So even though I'm not going to use all of the rock that's at the bottom, I'm going to lasso around it, hit Command J or Control J if you're on a PC, and then delete the, the layer I copied from, and then hit Control T Oh, I have to be on the right layer.
Layer management continues to be very important. And shrink it way down. Now when I shrink, I am losing pixel definition. But it is as big as it needs to be for my purpose, which in this case is for screen. So if I ever want to see what that looks like, I can go to view and say pixel to pixel. And so it's going to be that big. All right. So I'm cutting, I'm rough cutting my components and kind of layering them around my image. I have more than five. So let's see, what do I have next? My volcano stuff. So I'm going to bring in the volcano. This is the one that will be probably the first item I clean up a little bit better, but I'm not going to do that yet. I'm just going to loosely give myself a lot of overlap with my magic wand or my lasso, not my magic wand. And just cut it out just like I would cutting out from a magazine. Hit Command J and then delete what's behind it. Notice I don't have to rasterize anything because if you if you select around something and then duplicate it, it will automatically rasterize within PhotoP or Photoshop. Now I can do more than just shrink it. Like maybe I want this volcano to, to look a little bit taller. So I can squeeze it a little bit too. That's what's nice about organic elements. I'm thinking it will go right about there. So I know where that goes. And now there's going to be a big rock. So let me show you how I would start to compose these. The background layer is the only one I didn't um, cut, cut out from. You don't need to cut out from your background layer. You want something that fills up the whole thing. But I do need to rasterize it then. Maybe I'll tighten it up a little bit. Whoops. I'll make that mistake at least once a class. Because I'm so used to hitting Command T instead of Control T. Because that's one place. Photo P is different than Photoshop. Oh, so your sky layer, you keep it big? Whatever your furthest background layer is. Yep. And I think my dimensions are wrong because when I drag and drop in an image, it's huge and it dwarfs my uh, canvas and my sketch. So just check. You can crop down to your sketch and you can check the image size. We want it to be 10 inches by 72 pixels per inch now. And that is going to be quite a bit smaller than some of our references. Some references are just really big, depending on where you got them from. Okay, so I have one, two, three, four, and this will be my fifth element. And I have more than that, but you're required to have at least five. So once I have five, I'm going to show you how I start to rough layer them together. Now for this one, it's interesting. It has a shadow. I want to go ahead and grab some of that shadow too. And again, I have, I'm, I'm getting lots of overlap. Don't try to do a really refined cutout yet. Then I hit com Command J or Control J if you're on a PC and cut it out and delete what's behind it and then use Control T. Nope, I have to be on the right layer. Control T to shrink it. And this is the rock that's going to go in my volcano. It's going to be like a cork. Okay, so now remembering how layers work. They're like stacks of paper. 
So I'm going to start with my background Milky, Milky Way. Then I'm going to bring on my Eclipse. Just place it somewhere. Then I'm going to bring on my background mountain. Then I'm going to bring on my volcano. Then I'm going to bring on my, my rock cork. Now the problem is I can't see my sketch anymore, right? And instead of taking the opacity down on these, this is just like what we did for our shape composition. I'm going to take my background sketch. So I have a label that lets me. I'm going to take my sketch layer and I'm going to select with the rectangular marquee tool using my guides just that portion of the sketch and then I'm going to duplicate that command J and move that up above everything and then I'm going to take its opacity down to about 50 percent and lock it with the padlock and now I can go to these other layers and I can start to fine tune their placement, right? Like the rock. So before we start cutting things out really well, you want to work with their placement. Sometimes that means matching your sketch. Sometimes it means not matching your sketch. You know, doing something else. Like if you decide an element needs to be bigger or smaller. How did you crop it using the guides again? How did I crop it? So I just drew a selection box within the guides. Oh, using uh, free transform? Yep. And then you made that a new layer, move that to the top. And do some yeah, I hit thing. Command J, moved it to the top, and then took its opacity down. So it's floating. It's like a piece of, of tracing paper that I can put over my composite. Okay, so that's how you can arrange them. Now, obviously, I need some more, and my sketch has other elements that I'll bring in, so I just get more practice. So I have this big middle ground element I forgot about. And I want to use almost all of it. So with control G, I can bring it down, place it, and then drag it underneath my sketch layer. Right. And then this is how layers work. I need to bring it down below all the layers that it's underneath. I think I actually want that behind it. And now I can place it a little bit better. Control T. And I'm just doing very straightforward. I need to rasterize it. So I right click and I rasterize. So this is what's called rough placement. And so I can squeeze it. It's organic. I can warp it. I want to push that mountain ridge down a little bit. Remember, this is like rolling dough, kind of push and pull from different elements. As long as I don't overdo it, it will look believable if it's organic elements. If I did this to a house, that would look really weird. Right? Then I want this rock 